Now we get to move on to our final presenter. This is Peter Lynch, and he is the owner of Unshakable Coaching. Go ahead, Peter. We're ready for you. All right. Great to be here. Um, I love virtual presentations because I don't have to wear pants, but I won't do any jumping jacks, so we'll be okay. Uh, but yeah, so, you know, it was four years ago. It was about that. I, I think almost five now the hammer fell on me and I just, I, I really snapped. Uh, I'd been working so hard and I was, and, and, and this, uh, this crazy thing happened. And I was just told this happened because of you, you're a bad leader. And I just broke apart. I'd been working a, what felt like nonstop for five years. And before that I'd been struggling with massive amounts of addiction. I was in deep suicidal depression. I was every day, Every night, I would usually just drink myself to sleep because I didn't want to be alive. And when I'd wake up in the morning, it was always just with this, with this, with this deep feeling of just like, I don't want to, I hate this. I hated my life. I hated myself. I was, I was so dysfunctional and so broken. I wanted to do so much. And I still felt so broken inside. And it just, I would go, and, and at this time, I was living in Alaska and I was actually a nighttime caregiver to a dying man. So I, I didn't see the sun. I was taking care of a dying man. And I myself am dealing with just, just this bankruptcy inside, emotional and psychological. Just, just, I was wrecked. And I would go out into the woods at night by myself after I'd finished up, before I'd go sleep and not see the sun during the middle of the day. And I just feel so, such an agony. If you know the poem by Robert Frost, Stopping by the Woods on a Snowy Night, that was real for me where it was every night I'd go out there and just feel like, I don't know why I'm here. I don't know why I'm alive. And I don't really want to be, you know, and just coming face to face with that every night and somehow clinging to my life, somehow clinging to that there's something more that I'm determined that I was going to live for. So piece by piece, I started trying to shift everything that I in, internally and just diving into what do I need to do? Right. So, so a few years later, I get married probably sooner than I should have. We have a lot of challenges in our relationship, but it just, you know, I dropped off. I, I'd quit drinking a, few, a bit before that, right? Like, so piece by piece, I'm trying to just put myself back together and just, and, and really become a functional human being because I felt like just so far broken, even though on the outside, I looked okay. I was so far broken. So piecing, piecing my life together, trying to get responsible, trying to, you know, really step up my game professionally. And I was always a fast learner. I'd always rise to the top in whatever I was doing. But inside, I just felt like I was uh, imploding every time. Uh, and just so just agonized with this terrible feeling of outside, I looked like I was doing okay. And inside, I was just falling apart, cracking under the pressure of the work that I was doing. And, I, and on that, so I went, I got married, I jumped into school bus driving. Um, and and then I went to uh, doing a septic truck. So if you've ever done, like, I've, I've <laughs> I won't get explicit about what that job was like, but it was, it's pr probably one of the worst jobs you can have being literally covered in all kinds of stuff at the end of the day. Uh, and then we moved uh, in my desperation in our joint desperation, we end up moving to Kodiak, which is the big Island there in Alaska to join a cult. And so then I, which I didn't know was a cult at the time we get into this place. It was a school for troubled youth went down there to be an assistant leader and it took over the, uh, the main in uh, the revenue source for the place, which was this coffee shop, cafe, bookstore. And as a year in leadership there, I was just thrown in trial by fire and we more than doubled the revenue of that business. I put everybody in a place where they were operating at their highest and best. I was just, I was elevating the whole leadership. And at the same time, always hearing from the leadership above me, you're not good enough. You're a piece of trash you're a failure. So eventually it becomes clear that that situation was unhealthy. We moved from there. We actually just exit Alaska completely, come back down here. And I'm, and the best thing I think I feel, you know, with my low self-confidence, the best place I feel like I fit in was commercial roofing. So I go in and I'm putting big, big roofs on flat buildings. And within a few months, I become the, the foreman which pissed everybody off because I was the junior guy. But again, I'm, I'm climbing to the top as fast as I can and just bottoming out internally. So outside, we, we had some of the greatest projects this company's ever had. 
better sa uh, safety scores, better quality scores than the history. And, and so what comes to a head when finally one of these guys, he's everybody on the crew loved me, except for this one guy at this point. Um, maybe love me is a bit of a stretch, but most of the guys really, we got along great. There was a few that it, there was some friction, but we just, we had a system that worked and they recognized, they respected that I got results. This one guy, he wanted to be top dog and he hated that I was in charge. So he snaps at me one day and he's like this 250 pound Puerto Rican dude gets chest to chest in my face, pushing me to the edge of the roof. And it's like a two story drop to concrete. It was, it was intense. And, um, and I just had to stay calm in this moment and tell him, you need to get off the roof. And meanwhile, just make sure that I was positioning myself as he was pushing me and I was really helpless. Um, yeah, just pushing, make sure that he pushed me away from the edge at least, right? Finally, he calmed down, got off the roof. The situation de-escalated, right? He goes back, the boss gets on the roof and tells me, it's because of you, you're a bad leader. So, this brought me and my daughter was born and I just realized I've got to figure my life out because I traded all my other addictions for work addiction and it was time for me to rebuild me. And so I went through my, my time faster than I thought I always do. But so that's been the process now of rebuilding me and work as I work with others to also put in the work for myself so that I can be built up from the inside and, and really experience that that because it you everything happens from the inside when you train when you change your life changes and so that's been the process for me i think i'm probably out of time huh awesome yeah <laughs> and now you help bring others out so again a really powerful story hard hitting um and so now we get to unwrap more of that in our 20 minutes of q a if anyone oh, it looks like brandy wanted to take the first question so go for it brandy Yes. Well, Peter wasn't quite done just yet. So I wanted to ask him about his personal development. Like, how did he start within himself? Because obviously you can take, you can take a lot of pressure from society and bad bosses and things like that. But what was it that obviously, you know, really sparked that change? And what are you still doing to work on yourself yeah. through the growth? Yeah. Oh, every day. Um, Cause I mean, first of all, I feel like it, it, it's one of these things where I, you know, one of the analogies I use is personal development. I mean, it's really more a matter of personal uh, self, of self discovery than it is development. I believe that we're peeling away layers like an onion to get at the core of who we are. And when you can step more and more into who you truly are, that's when you show up with more power in the world around you, right? For me, that's, this is how God made you and he has given you a call. And when you can step into alignment with that, your life transforms. So, I mean, it's like peeling away onion layer after onion layer, or the other analogy is like, you're climbing a, a hill, right? And you think this is the mountaintop for me. It's like it's over and over. I'm like, this is the mountaintop. It's grueling to get to the top of this mountain. I get up there and I'm like, this was an anthill. Uh, Jocelyn it's asked for, for one. She asked for a, a questionnaire during her meeting. Sounds like background. Um, so I got distracted, but you know, get to the top and you're like, this was an anthill for me. It's like, this was an anthill. Now I see the full mountain range in front of me. Um, so I just, all that to say, like, I feel like every day it's a, it's, 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 it's actually one of my biggest struggles is to feel like I'm, I still have so much to grow as I'm trying to, as I am providing that process to others. But this, so what this process for me happened when I was like, before I moved to Alaska, I knew I needed help, right? I get up to Alaska, I really know, like, I really need a lot of help in the midst of that darkness. So that process started for me back there. And it's been, it, it's been, um, so for me, self-development, all this. So I, I, I read a lot. Uh, there's, I read a lot from like spiritual writings, ancient works, the Bible, right? The philosophers, Lao Tzu, um, and, and then there's also the more modern works, which are great. I, I, wisdom is eternal. There's no new thing under the sun, but we have the modern with, uh, writers, which are really a synthesis of the thought that came before them. And a lot of times they can, pro they can put it into a package that's more understandable. And if anything, that's my work now is just to synthesize the wisdom, the wealth of wisdom that's come before me and do my best to tap into the, to the, to the extent that I can and synthesize that into an understandable palatable form in our crazy modern world where we can apply it because the biggest thing long winded on my answers, but the biggest thing for me is it has to be applicable because when you can apply it, that's when things change. If you're just trying to 
gain philosophical knowledge, it doesn't do you any work, help. And so that was a place where I was stuck. So learning to take that philosophical, spiritual wisdom and apply it into life, that's when things really transformed. That's beautiful. So before I ask my question, I see a couple comments on Facebook in regards to your, your uh, presentation. First, Tanisha Martin says, completely agree. We shed the unhealthy programming and reveal our true selves. And then Kim Stewart says, cults fascinate me. <laughs> so <laughs> we can talk. <laughs> I know a lot about them. Right. I bet. I I've studied since then just to unravel a lot of the the psychological damage that was done. Interesting. Fascinating. So my, Peter, my question for you is you're the owner of unshakable coaching. What is unshakable coaching and what is your your goal to help others achieve? Unshakable. It's unshakable because it's this process. Again, the more you come to do the inner work, the more unshakable you become, right? Because it's, uh, I love the analogy of the lighthouse, right? That's beaten by the waves. The waves of life are going to come. Suffering and pain are going to come. This year is a great example of that, right? Like the, the waves and the storms of life, they're coming. But when you dig a deep foundation within yourself, you can become unshakable like that lighthouse. The waves and the storms are going to beat against it, but it's still a beacon of hope to everyone that's tossed at sea. And, when, and the more disconnected you are from yourself, the more untethered you are from your own anchor, the less roots you have. It's like a great tree. When the winds come, the deeper the root, right? Winds come and really it's always um, trees are either ripped up or they're made stronger. And so the deeper the roots get, the more strong they become. And that's really the process of becoming unshakable is really digging into yourself. And it, and it centers around really three things for me, which is, first of all, to develop an unstoppable mindset, because your thinking is really what determines your results. It really creates your life because everything starts in the thoughts and then manifests into our life because everything is energy. Your thoughts are a real thing that start up here and we think of them as intangible. So it's not as it's not we think, oh, we can just think whatever. But those thoughts eventually become the way we feel, which the leads to our actions, which is the second piece, which is uh, supercharging your performance, because I'm a, I'm a big geek when it comes to maximizing your time, time management, but not, not going so much into management as it is just a holistic view of how do you perform at your highest and best? Because sometimes the way to affect your thinking is through your actions. And sometimes the way to affect your actions is through your thinking. So it's a holistic approach centered around one thing, which is a powerful vision. Because when you have a powerful vision for your life, it becomes the anchor point that you're moving towards. Without that, you know, without a vision, the people perish. And that was part of my struggle with depression. I had no vision. The more I started to finally like start to grasp what a vision for my life was, the more challenging it was. Deeply, deeply painful and challenging because I realized how far away from that I am and how much I had to become the person that could accomplish the vision. So I, that's, that encompasses what unshakable, the, the process, but also the meaning behind unshakable is becoming unshakable within here because stuff's going to happen, but you can rise above it. Very nice. So next up, we've got Dylan. Dylan, do you want to unmute and ask your question? Yeah. Hey, Peter, good story, man. And I, I feel for you on trying to cram a, a life story into six minutes because I like to talk too. So um, hey, my question is this, getting into your business side, which you just started, I think, really kind of peeling back the layers. Uh, who, who is your client? Who is your target client? And, you know, what's that niche? And then the second part of that is, um, you know, really, what's the problem you're solving for those people? Yeah, great question. Um, so the target client is entrepreneurs and leaders, those who are in a place of responsibility, right? Those who are carrying that pressure, right? Because and, and the, the, what, what problem do I solve? The problem is inner blocks when you're, go, when you're reaching for more, but you feel like somehow it's difficult, right? And it's not for a lack of technical skill set. might not be for a lack of, I mean, it's just, as I've experienced, you know, I just know this from my deep experience of like, I can, ha I can have money coming in and not know what to do with it. I can have money know it coming in and just dump it out the back seat or whatever. Right. Like it, so it's, you can have money, you can have skill, you can have talent, raw talent. I've got, you know, I've I always felt like one of the things for me, one of the big struggles was I feel kind of like wasted talent, right? 
Um, so it's been a process because I would waste it because of all my internal blocks. I wasn't allowing myself to move forward because of the blockages that were all internal. Sorry if you can hear the kids. Um, they're right by my door right now. It's a little, sorry for the distraction. But um, so that's the piece. It's, it's, it's all about the inner work. The inner work leads to the external results. So the person I'm looking for is somebody who feels stuck inside. And a lot of times it's hard to even pinpoint. And the process, I love the, the root of the word education. The Latin root is educo, which means to educe from within, right? So you have the answers within you. I don't, I don't really do much. I really facilitate, but I understand how to facilitate that. And I understand that process. I've done it for many others and I'm passionate about doing it for as many people as I can. So it's anybody who feels like they're stuck in an internal hell because that's what I've come out of. And I didn't come out of that hell for no reason. You know, I didn't come out of it to leave people behind. Nice, thank you. So Flip, you're up next. All right, so great story. So I want to know if you can take us back to that time in Alaska and you already were feeling like I need help, I need to do something. What was the resource at that moment that started getting you looking into those layers of the onion? Yeah, great question. Um, so I'd lived my, uh, I'd always grew up with a spiritual kind of awareness, you know, so, um, so that's always been a piece there, the whole idea of developing yourself spiritually, right? The crisis for me became when I, when I started to see in those dark times that to develop spiritually, it, you, it's almost impossible when you're missing the foundation, right? Which is your emotional and your psychological being. You have to look at yourself as a holistic piece. Excuse me. So I was trying to do something that was really out of my grasp. The, the spiritual teachings that I would read were greatly beneficial because they started to illumine a path for me to pursue. But it also brought a lot of light and really started to shine it onto the lack. You know, it's like a dark room and you start shining a, a flashlight and you realize, oh, man, this place is a mess. It's covered in, you know, clutter. And it's like, so that was like the crisis moment of starting to see like that internal attic that's full of garbage and it's easier to keep the lights off because you don't want to see it. But when you clear it out, you're going to feel better. Right. You know, so it's like that, that was like, I think the beginning kind of process and research, I hope this answer, but it was just to start to feel like what I was reading and what I was diving into and in my spiritual practice and, and reading, et cetera, was starting to shine a light on the mess that I realized I need an answer to this. And I don't understand quite, and it's not for a lack of the resources. It was a lack of myself. And so that started to push me to realize, you know, to start, I mean, at the time I didn't understand all these other pieces of psychology and emotional work and all this stuff. Um, you know, of course, aware of psychology and therapy, but I didn't, there was some blocks there for me. So, I mean, I just dove into just working you know, and trying to just build my skill set, because I thought if I could just learn more skills, I'll make more money. Of course, it doesn't work directly like that. It's really about the more value you provide and the more you value yourself. So that's been a big part of the process too, but that's another tangent. Does that answer? Awesome. Cool. Totally right. The values, the values there. Um, so I'll wait for someone to pop into the chat to let us know that they want to be have the honor of asking our super special question. Um, and um, I gotta say, Peter, I was your organizer. Just so you guys know, when you apply to present, you don't just get thrown in and say, okay, present now, you're assigned an organizer and we make sure that you know what your presentation looks like, that you're comfortable with that. Um, so Peter, as I was hearing you tell your story, I realized um, how your timeline came together. And it's really great that, that your family did come into your life at the right time um because your girls are or you have a girl and a boy precious precious kids amazing wife and we're so glad to have you in colorado springs so um yep it is time for our super special question so if you have any more questions again go on social media reach out directly um to our presentation presenters today um i'm i'm a little bit lost in the chat so did someone volunteer was that you sam Who, okay perfect hey peter uh, great to see you again, man. Uh, what can we do as the Colorado Springs business community to help you out, my friend? Love this question. Yes. Um, 
and I kind of have to hijack for one, just to say too, like 2020 on that point of the children and everything, my son was born this past year and 2020 has been an incredibly challenging year, but it's been really the best year of my life. And so what I want is to empower others to have that same kind of experience. So what the Colorado Springs business community can do for me is, is twofold. Refer anybody or yourself directly, get on a call with me, let's, uh, or just a one-on-one. -on -one. If we can meet somewhere, I, I, I love meeting in person, or if we're just doing a Zoom call, let's do that. I wanna to talk to and network and just build relationships with as many people as I can. Uh, because part of that experience, you know, coming away from the whole, like, you're a bad leader moment, um, and I didn't have time and I'm not going to spend more time on it, but I just, it, it sent me into almost hiding there for a while. And as I've been piecing through my self work and coming back out of that place, like I realized one of the things I hadn't developed was relationships in the community as a whole, as a network with especially the business community. So I'm passionate about building those relationships. I really want that opportunity. So if you know anybody that needs help, or if you need help, reach out to me, let's just talk. There's no pressure there, but if I can help you, I'm I'll do everything I can for you. And, uh, and the second piece is I'm passionate about presenting. I'm passionate about speaking, whether that's if so, if you know a place that, you know, whether that's a uh, physical stage, a virtual stage like this or a podcast, I want to get out there and just share the message with as many people as I can. I'm, uh, this is where I light up. So uh, those are the two, the two big things for me. Mm -hmm.